Hey y'all, welcome to Games for Young Minds. I'm Kent, here to talk to you about why I made this channel. So I became a math teacher way back in 2010, but my interest in math really started to change when I became a parent because I did what I think a lot of first-time parents do. Is I, I bought all these books and I started reading them and I was asking everybody for advice because I just wanted to make sure that once we had the baby, I was totally ready to be a parent and it did not work and I was not ready at all, but I did my best and I feel like that's what happens to everybody. But I did notice something really weird along the way, which is that parents get all sorts of advice on how to help their kids become readers. I mean, there's all this great stuff out there about building your child's library at home and reading to them for 20 minutes every night and there is basically nothing out there about math. And that was crazy to me because obviously math is extremely important. I mean, if you don't know how to count and compare objects, figure out how simple shapes combine to make more complicated shapes, you, you are really limited in your ability to understand the world. And so obviously we would want our kids to be developing these ideas from as early an age as possible, but, but there's, just, there's really just nothing out there. I mean, you've got maybe some workbooks and some flashcards, but oh, that sounds like misery to me. And I started thinking about it. Okay, the rule of thumb with reading is read to your kids for 20 minutes every night. So why do parents do this? Well, I think they do it for a couple reasons. First of all, there's a lot of really well-established research that the more you read to your kids, the better prepared they are to actually learn how to read once they get into a formal schooling environment. That is extremely powerful, but I will say that if it were just useful to read to your kids for 20 minutes a night, I don't think parents would always do it. I don't think it would have become this phenomenon. The reason that parents really do it is because it's fun. You get to introduce your kids to your absolute favorite stories from growing up and, and they don't know the ending so you can talk about what's going to happen next and, and you get to re-experience the story for the first time in decades and, and then the conversation might take in a different direction and, and it might be this fascinating weird conversation you have with your kids that never would have happened otherwise and I think that's why so many parents make it part of their daily routine is because it's a moment where they can connect with their kids while also building this foundation to become readers. So I started thinking, what is a rule of thumb that we could use to help our kids learn math? Like, I don't want it to be, here, do this workbook, and then once you're done with this workbook, do this next one. That sounds miserable. So what's something that would be beneficial to our kids' development of math ideas while also being fun? And that's when I realized that games are the perfect avenue to have mathematical conversations. Because games are inherently mathematical. Games are all about structures and rules and limitations and objects and space fitting together and numbers. And anytime you roll the dice, anytime you fit a piece with another piece, anytime you draw a card, you are doing some sort of math. Now, it doesn't feel like math in the same way that a math lesson in school does, but it is, it is using math as the pathway towards the fun right? You do more math because it's more fun to be good at the game. And the way you get good at the game is by getting good at the math. And it's a particularly good experience if you can sprinkle in a couple interesting questions along the way. So for example, if you want your kid to know what four plus three is, if that's just really important to you, they got to know what four plus three is. You could tell them, you could say, hey, you know, four plus three is seven. And they'll nod at you and then immediately forget it. But if you phrase it as a question, if you ask them, Hey, what, it, what does four and three make? Or even better, what are some numbers that add to seven? Well, now your kid's really thinking. And the more they're thinking, the more they're developing the pathways of thought that they're gonna be using for years and years ahead. And in the context of a game, you can ask something simple like, what do you hope to roll this turn? Oh, you, you hope to roll a seven. Well, how could you do that? And the kids are thinking, oh man, I, I gotta roll a four and a three, or, or, or maybe a five and a two, or, or maybe a six and a one. And they're having a mathematical moment all on their own, just because you dropped in one little question. But they're also fun. You're having that same deep connection with your kids that you get from reading books to them. And you're also getting the experience of talking about winning and losing and what it means to play fair and having all these conversations that slide away from math and then maybe back towards it. But regardless, you're gonna be developing those really long lasting memories that, that all parents think back to and say, man, those were some great times, right? So that's my rule of thumb, play games and ask questions. And since 2017, I've been sending out a weekly newsletter with a new game recommendation every single week. I share a board game or a card game you can play with your kids. I explain the math that's inside the game, and I give a few suggestions for questions you can ask along the way. But recently, I started working on these videos as well, because I think, frankly, it's a lot easier to learn a game if you can actually hear somebody and see the pieces rather than just having to read it. I am really excited about it, and I think it's going to be great, but it is also much more expensive to produce. I mean, I had to 
basically build a little mini studio in my basement and get all these lights and sound equipment and all of this stuff. So if you've gotten something out of my newsletter or my website or my videos, I would really appreciate your support on Patreon. It would allow me to buy better equipment so that I could make these videos more quickly and, and more professionally. And it would allow me to devote a little bit of time into some different ideas that I have for interesting other sorts of videos that I would love to make to help parents. But most of all, I just want you to share anything that you find useful. If you know any other parents that you think would benefit from this stuff, I would love for you to just share a video with them and say, hey, try this out with your kids. I mean, my ultimate goal here is to make recreational math just as much a part of kids' life as reading is. And the best way to do that is for parents to share with each other things that worked with them. If that just means you share one of my newsletters or one of my videos with somebody, that means a lot. Any support on Patreon would really be appreciated. And as always, I just want you to play games and ask questions. I'll see you soon.